But let's start the program to dissect the near-death experience of four banks around the world and the knock-on impact here in Australia. It started with Silicon Valley Bank, set up in Palo Alto to service fast-growing emerging tech companies. It held large deposits and, while interest rates were low, tried to gain a high return by investing in longer-term bonds. But as rates rose rapidly, losses on those bonds mounted and matters were made worse when a run started on the bank. Investors sensed danger and wanted out. Yeah, this morning um, I came out to talk to the bank, just got in line with uh, a lot of other founders and, <laughs> and CEOs, uh, just to find out what was happening and then also the options we've got. Um, and really as a, as a CEO, we have to make sure that both our employees, our customers and our investors, you know, we're protecting the things that we have. That prompted a precipitous 60% fall in SVB's share price. Then federal action. It promised all deposit holders money would be made safe. Not just the first $250,000 promised by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So you will be able to transact business as usual. Your accounts are safe. Your online portals are active. You'll be able to wire and do business as usual. So if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. This was unprecedented action to try to quickly restore calm. I can reassure the members of the committee that our banking system is sound and that Americans can feel confident that their deposits will be there when they need them. SVB's problem were closely followed by Signature Bank, a bank that specialised in crypto investors and a belief it was different from the rest. Mind you, they were prophetic. Is there a book, How to Build a Bank for Dummies? Wouldn't it be easier just to go out and buy a bank? We looked at that, but the prices are too expensive and we'd be stuck with all their legacy issues. We have to make our own mistakes. But then we'd have nobody to blame but ourselves. It turns out Signature Bank wasn't different. It was vulnerable to a run. Investors withdrew $10 billion, which led to the third biggest bank failure in US history. The next target was not in the US, instead one of Europe's most important banks, the 167-year-old Credit Suisse, first created to finance the famously reliable Swiss Railway Network. But Credit Suisse, a systemically important bank, has been wounded for some time since the collapse of Anglo-Aussie finance company Greensill Capital, the US funds manager Archegos Capital and a money laundering conviction. Its share price collapsed 38% on the spot. It's down more than 70% this year, with fears it could be next. But Switzerland's central bank, the National Bank of Switzerland, was taking no chances. It provided a lifeline, a line of credit of 50 billion Swiss francs, around 81 billion Australian dollars. Credit Suisse have a series of, uh, you know, mismanagement and legal issues. Uh, and also, you know, uh, this, they kind of have been uh, trying to survive, uh, survive from crisis to crisis. Uh, so they, they are not in great shape. Uh, and, you know, investors know that for a long time. But it wasn't yet over. The share price of a range of mid-sized US banks also slumped, with fears they could be next. More than 100 US bank shares are down more than 20% in the past month. PacWest looked bad, down 42% in a week. Western Alliance down 41%. First Foundation down 32%. But the one they focused on was First Republic, down 64% in a week, 73% for the month. Like Signature Bank, First Republic deals with high net worth clients and is renowned for its parties. Among its celebrated clients, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, who for some reason chose to borrow $5 million from the bank to help finance a home purchase. First Republic Bank is not the first canary in the mine, but there are canaries that are now feed up, and those include things like Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and lots of worry about Credit Suisse, a storage financial institution. But in this case, the $30 billion bailout came not from the government, but from 11 of the US's biggest banks, including JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. But even that wasn't enough to prevent another big wobble in its share price on Friday night. Shareholders and debt holders are not being protected by the government. 
Importantly, no taxpayer money is being used or put at risk with this action. Deposit protection is provided by the Deposit Insurance Fund, which is funded by fees on banks. But that, as we'll explain shortly, is a very big obligation for the US government to make 